Hello, this is Grace Nasrallah, and today I am hosting Dorothy Vernon Brown. Uh, Dorothy is a digital marketer, and uh, she offers automation, including chatbox and coaching. Uh, thank you for accepting to be with us today, Dorothy. Thank you for having me, Grace. I'm really delighted to be here. So uh, how is the COVID-19 situation uh, with you? You know what? I've been very fortunate, Grace, that uh, because of the work I do, because I'm in digital, I'm in the digital space and I use technology a lot. This hasn't really affected the way I work or how I work with clients. Um, fortunately for me, I'm not I, so it, it's business as usual for me. And um, the fact is, I've, you know, I've always been using, well, about two years ago when I transitioned to a fully digital company, I started to use a lot of the tools that people are now using. For example, people are just warming up to Zoom or they've just heard of Zoom. So people always say they're Zoomed out or in. But I've been using Zoom for at least two years now, um, using the technology to become more efficient. So for me and the clients that I work with, and I serve, uh, it's not really any different. As a matter of fact, um, there's not really been any interruption in terms of how the process of my work, certainly for interruption with my clients, some of the clients that have been brick and mortar or who host or do other kinds of, um, offer other kinds of services, it has been a disruption to them. And I'm happy that I'm pretty much poised to help that, to take them to pivot from offline to online because I've, I'm already there. It's I understand the tools and the technology and I'm pretty much poised to take them there quickly and successfully. So it's been really good for me in, in terms of being poised for this moment. That is amazing. That is amazing. It is, thank you. Uh, now, I noticed that you talk uh, about a three digital framework for ultimate online success. Would you please explain what you mean by that? Sure, Grace. I'm really happy and I feel very passionate about this because uh, these days in the in the pandemic, a lot of people have been forced to transition online, which I've been preaching for a very long time. Uh, but going online doesn't mean you're doing more Zoom calls or it doesn't mean you are on social more or you, you you've ramped up your website that's not really what online is online means when you're making a full pivot online and you need a framework it means you should be able to accept payment online you should be able to exchange your goods and services with um with your prospects and clients and you get a payment in return now a lot of people the businesses are not yet been set up that way and what that means is that once you make that online transition even as a brick and mortar so you're taking your foot traffic online you, you've got to find people online or transition your customers online it, it means that the first step is how do I gain attention because once you go online it opens up your you, the, the possibilities and the opportunities for you unless you work in a very small concentrated geographic area but even so you can you can get you can get more 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 prospects you, you've not had before so you need to gain the attention so how do you do that it means that you've got to set in place a system that creates some kind of traction that captures the lead that nurtures the lead and converts them into a sale and once you convert them into a sale how do you improve the lifetime value and how do you create a referral machine that to me is what those steps look like the systems that are automated you put them in place so you can now truly transition or improve your online presence mm. Uh, interesting, interesting, like to, to uh, know these marketing concepts and be able to apply them. Huh? What fatal mistake do you see small business owners and entrepreneurs make time after time? You know, the biggest fatal mistake I see, Grace, is that they think 
well, there's so many, where to start. But I think they think marketing is a one-time set it and forget it. And that's not true. Because behaviors change, your customer prospects are moving at a different place at a different moment along that customer journey. Uh, and sometimes it's not linear. Also, people feel that once they get the sale, that's the end of marketing. And it's not. I alluded earlier is that once you get the sale, what next? How do you improve the customer lifetime value? Mm -hmm. And then how do you turn those excited customers that you have into a referral partner for you? Mm -hmm. So there are many things that happen even after the sale that you ought to be doing as a small business owner and entrepreneur. And that's one of the biggest things I see. The other thing that I see is that there is no system. There is no repeatable and predictable system that they set up that can really really catapult their business to the next level. You know, they see marketing as a cost center, and that's not true. It's an investment, and an investment gives you a return on investment, but that takes time. And so you have to put this predictable and repeatable system in place so you can get that return on investment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we were, we were uh, talking uh, about chatbots. Uh, chatbots are in these days, and they have been in for a short while, and they are there to help the small business owner and entrepreneur. Tell us a little bit about chatbots. Sure. Well, actually, chatbots have been around for a very, very long time, but the only enterprise-level uh, organizations, your big um organizations could afford to use chatbots. So we know of IBM's Watson. They have been around for a very long time and so many. But what has happened in the last three years, actually, is that uh, chatbots are, have become um, very accessible for to biz, small business owners and entrepreneurs. And in a nutshell, what a chatbot is, it's really a software program or application that can stimulate human conversation via audio or text. So a chatbot can either be powered by a pre-programmed or predetermined responses or artificial intelligence to drive conversation. So that's when we get into the more sophisticated natural uh, language processing where they understand human context and, and all of those things and learn and respond. But uh, what I work with are some predetermined programs that you can set up and get people, get chatbots responding on behalf of business owners while they sleep. So now chatbots are used in messaging, uh, chat, text. You know, we all use it. We all use it, but we're unaware that we use that kind of artificial intelligence or that kind of pre-programmed languages at this point. So, so the unique feature about chatbots is that uh, it can... Uh, you can program it to, to give the answers while you are not there. So you do, you do not have to do it on the spot. Uh, you can program I, it. Yeah, that that's correct, Grace. That's precisely correct. So that's what chatbots. That's why chatbots make your life so much easier now. So while you are asleep, while you're on vacation, chatbots can answer questions for you uh, to, to prospects who say land on your website or engage with you in some other way. So for argument's sake, um, why I love it so much, it's um, it doesn't take days off. It's not an it's it won't be annoyed like, a, you know, or it doesn't have sick days. It doesn't take sick leave. If in a pandemic, it still works for you because it's giving you answers to say frequently asked questions. Say, for argument's sake, Grace, somebody lands on your website and they want the answer to uh, frequently asked questions. A chatbot can be pre-programmed to answer that. And now your customer service is th through the roof, right? There are people these days are impatient. They want answers immediately. And this is what chatbots can do for you, right? That's just one of the things. If you have an e-commerce store, chatbots can do take the order for you. They can reduce the cart abandonment. It is amazing what chat can do for you to take your business to the next level. Yeah. And that's why I'm so excited about yeah. chatbots and conversational experiences. And, and a good example for the people that use Facebook. Facebook has uh, is using chatbot 
for in messenger so sometimes Correct. we see that that uh, it gives us the option to choose questions this is a chatbot feature yeah it is yeah, that's right uh, uh, grace and i use um chatbots that i use are, are integrated with the with the facebook messenger because we facebook has it's a one of the it's a behemoth platform it typically has your clients my clients and so it's very useful to be on a platform that is so huge to reach audiences that you pretty much can't reach on your own so the work that we do is integrated with the facebook messenger platform uh, Dorothy, another question is, what marketing advice would you give small business owners to thrive in these challenging days? You know, hands down, Grace, it would be get comfortable with using technology. With technology, you can make quantum leaps. Say for argument's sake, automation, that's what I fell in love with it. Because you can now automate business processes and set it and tweak over time but you don't need to be going say for example again uh things that your customers want or you or your proposals or anything like that you can automate these parts of your business you can automate your most importantly your lead generation you can use automation to nurture people along that journey and that is driven by technology and so I believe you're, the biggest asset you're, you're going to have in your business at this point is some kind of technology to drive your growth. And the truth is, if you're not going, if you're not using technology, you're going to fall behind. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have seen. Zoom is a video app technology. They exploded during the pandemic, and that's what we see. And we can cite so many other apps that have exploded during the pandemic. I think Microsoft Teams, for example, they grew exponentially because of the technology that powers it. And now we see that your business def definitely can't thrive without the technology behind it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nowadays there are technologies for uh, each and every uh, aspect of a business. For example, there are technologies for accounting. There are technologies, uh, the t team technologies, the social uh, technologies, uh, and uh, HR technologies. So every aspect of your business has uh, a specific technology that, that uh, we can use, right? Absolutely. And I think that's a way not only use, but if you use technology smartly, it's going to catapult your business. There's just no question about that. Mm -hmm. Use the technology, embrace it, and um, and you don't have to do it. Just understand it enough that you know you need it and get the experts to do it. I always say business owners, you're not an expert in everything. Stick to what you do best and then outsource or get people on your team who are good at it, but know that there's some pieces of your business that needs to be that need to be driven by technology in order to grow. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, what is the one thing you believe small business owners and entrepreneurs should embrace to survive or thrive in this period? Well, I think I just answered that, yeah. Grace. And again, it's just using the technology that is good for you, that makes you more efficient, that uh, gives you a return on your investment, that is able to capture your leads and nurture them from um, that micro commitment to a macro commitment of your, your core products and into uh, using it to improve the lifetime value of a customer and also to um, create a referral machine for you. So whatever technology that is, that is what I think you ought to use because that that is pretty much in a nutshell the framework of what, what, the marketing piece of your business. And of course, you know, without the marketing, you really it is the lifeblood of your business. I don't care what anybody says. If you don't have a stream, a steady stream of clients coming in through uh, your online portal or through the doors as you as we reopen, then you you you're going to have a cash flow issue. 
and you're going to have a sales issue, you're going to have a revenue issue. So uh, you need to find the technologies that are going to help to enhance your business processes that improve your improves your sale and revenues. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, uh, what is what is the one thing you believe small business owners and entrepreneurs should embrace as they promote uh, the COVID nineteen regulations in their uh, on their pre uh, within their premises, right? You know, the first thing I think uh, business owners, small business owners, and entrepreneurs ought to do, Grace, is to reset and reinvent themselves. Mm. Honestly, I think that's what it is. I think they need to take a look at where they are now um, and see how best they can serve their clients because some of the needs clients had pre-COVID, they might not have it anymore. And uh, needs that have been unfulfilled or underserved may now uh, become more prominent. So I think they need to take a step back and look at where their business is at this point in time and how they need to serve their clients and at what point you, we've got to meet our clients exactly where they're at at this point right now in fact i would say you've got to throw out your pre-covid marketing playbook and review that create a new one for 2020 moving forward for the next five or six months because what used to be pre-COVID is no longer in many, many cases. Mm, yes, yes, that is, that, that is so true. That is so true. Like uh, um, even even the department stores, the, their marketing has to be different because now different audience come at different times because Correct. of the lineups, right? Co and because, Correct. Yeah. So yeah, even even the regular businesses that we go to, they have to revisit their marketing strategy and their yeah. Um, Correct. As a matter of fact, just just to enhance that, um, I was speaking with a dentist recently, and he talked about how, and as you've talked about how they have to rearrange everything, their their entire office, the practice, how they now see patients, um, how you have to do pre-cleaning, post-cleaning of the entire area. So everything has been disrupted. So now, how do, what do you, so, you know, clients are not, patients are not likely to be in a waiting room. Yes. You know, they, you, you've got to be very efficient. But so how do you now, increase that conversation with that client that has to be pre-appointment post appointment and it's things like using the automated emails or the the chat to improve that customer experience because they have to be in and out so these are the things that you now have to look at as a business owner definitely definitely uh if viewers if viewers want a go deep, to go deeper into into this, a discussion like that with you, Dorothy, where can they find you? They, um, I'm I'm on any of the social media platforms, Grace. I am on Instagram at um, AKB Small Business Marketing, um, at Facebook AKB Small Business Marketing, on my website akbsmallbusinessmarketing.com and um, you know just search for akbsmallbusinessmarketing.com whether I'm on LinkedIn as well akb small business marketing so I can be found pretty much across all the social platforms LinkedIn Facebook Instagram Twitter and my website thank you for watching and I hope that you found this marketing information session beneficial for more business videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Biz Reflections by Grace Nasrallah. And I will see you uh, soon.